Hello and welcome to MaxSurf Webinar 5, Video 2 on Damage Stability. We've seen in the first video the effect of damage due to the loss buoyancy method. But before we start with our damage analysis, we need to set up our damage cases and also set up our key points to assess the effects of damage. Setting up our damage cases involves the usual definition of tanks and compartments with an additional step that we should set the permeability of tanks and compartments in the damage condition. Some stability criteria require a different permeability in each case. Then we define our damage cases and for each case we select which tanks and compartments to damage. A command which can help us with that is the extent of damage command. It allows us to define a volume within the vessel and all of the tanks and compartments which intersect that zone will be automatically damaged. We define the extent of damage by means of the aft, forward, port, starboard and top and bottom coordinates. Hydromax has command for displaying the damaged tanks and compartments and that can help us check that we've defined our damage cases correctly. You should also note that because Hydromax assumes that all of the fluid is lost from any damaged tanks, they will be labelled damaged in the load case and they will not contribute because there is no massive fluid left in their tanks. Finally, if you do have any permanently flooded spaces, they should be defined using non-buoyant volumes. You should not try and use damage to model permanently flooded spaces. The second part of damage setup is to define our key points and margin lines. Key points are down flooding points where fluid can flow into the vessel. They can also be down flooding points or potential down flooding points, embarkation points or immersion points. You should note that key points are not necessarily symmetrical, so you should define them independently for the port and starboard sides. Key points can be linked to a tank or compartment. This means if the tank or compartment is already damaged, then that down flooding point will be ignored when it becomes immersed. Obviously if the tank or compartment is already damaged, then the fact that the down flooding point becomes immersed has no further effect on the vessel. Note however that because a down flooding point becomes immersed does not mean that the tank or compartment is automatically flooded. The tank or compartment is only flooded if you define it to be damaged in the damage case. Another property of key points is the floods from option. By default we assume that key points flood from the sea, however it is possible to define that they flood from another damaged tank or compartment. This is kind of the opposite of link to because it means that the down flooding point is only active if the compartment that it floods from is actually damaged. Key points can be used for either intact or damage stability. And the last part of setup is to check our margin line is set up correctly. Hydromax will automatically create a margin line 76 millimeters below the deck edge for you. But if you do need to adjust the position of that line, you can do so by editing the margin line points. So let's switch over to Hydromax and uh, take a look at our setup. First, we define our tanks and compartments as usual. So we go to our tank and compartment window and we can see that as well as our intact permeability column, we also have a damage permeability column. So we should set up those values when we define our tanks and compartments. Next, we create a series of damage cases and we do that in the damage case window. In this window, we see that the first case is always called intact and as you'd expect, that means that none of the tanks or compartments are damaged. And then we can create a series of damage cases, each of which will appear in a column. We do that from the case menu using the commands to add, delete and edit damage cases. So we can see here our engine room damage case and if we scroll down we can see that there's a tick set by the engine room compartment so that's the only compartment damaged in that case. We go across to the double bottom case. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off all of the damage so nothing is damaged at this point. And then I'm going to go over to the profile view in Hydromax. We've got uh, icons here to turn on damaged compartments and turn on damaged tanks and we can see that nothing's displayed at the moment uh, for this double bottom case, damage case that we're looking at. But uh, in the case menu we have an extent of damage command and it actually applies when we're in the damage case window. So if I select the column for the double bottom damage case 
I can choose extent of damage and I can type in the coordinates of the zone that I want to damage. So I'm going to damage from just forward of midships to the front of the vessel at uh, 40 metres. I'm going to damage in an unlimited distance in the port and starboard directions, but I'm only going to damage up to a height of one metre. So all I'm damaging is the forward part of the vessel up to one metre above the baseline. You can see that various compartments and tanks automatically get ticked here to show that they're damaged. And in the profile view, we can see that because we've got damaged tanks and compartments turned on, uh, those tanks and compartments have been added to the current damage case. For the definition of key points, we go to the key points window. And we can see here I've already got a couple of key points. I've got a port and starboard vent in my engine room. I can choose the type of the down flooding point here, potential or embarkation and so on. And I can attach it to the engine room. So here, if I make my column a bit wider, we can see that I can link that to the engine room. So that down flooding point will only be active if the engine room is intact. I can also choose whether that down flooding point floods from the sea or from some other compartment in the model. And finally, in the last two columns, I can define whether that key point applies to the intact or damaged condition or to both. For the margin line definition, if we go to the profile view, we can actually turn on the margin line and we can see the automatically generated margin line just below the deck edge. If we want to change that, we can go to the margin line window and actually edit the height of the margin line points there. It's only the height that we need to change to uh, define the margin line. That completes our setup of damage cases and key points. Thank you for watching.